the so-called birth of Christ, the way the world is doing it, you're going to see tonight what actually happened from beginning to end about Jesus' birth. And it's nothing like the world at all. It's nothing like what these folk are telling us at all. And we're going to go straight to the Bible, and we're going to read every scripture. And it's going to be in line. So if it wasn't read, it's not in the Bible. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. All right? I want you to understand that for your understanding so you can know. So you can know exactly what's going on. So tonight we're talking about the true birth of Jesus. The true birth of Jesus. So let's go to Matthew chapter 1. And hope you write them down so you can know your Savior. Okay, Matthew chapter 18. Have any questions, feel free to ask, okay? Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Okay, excuse me. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, all right? Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. It says this. It says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on, I see your pages turn. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, all right? It says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child uh the Holy Ghost. Now let's start right there for a minute. We're going to start right there, all right? Now, this is telling us what actually took place. Now I want you to go to the book of Luke, chapter 1. Luke, chapter 1. Now we're talking about the birth of Jesus. When it says on this wise, it means this highest. Happen. So that's why we start right there, but we're going back to that. Help you understand. Everybody got Luke chapter 1? Okay, beginning with verse 26, it says this. And this is how it happened. And we, we're not talking about John the Baptist. We're only talking about Jesus, all right? It says, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Now here, it's talking about how everything got started, all right? Okay, now, it says, And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that are highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled, at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Now this is the angel Gabriel, actually before Mary got pregnant, announcing what was going to take place. And what I like about it, the angel told Mary, you found favor with God. Now, people, if you want to find favor with somebody, get yourself in a place to find favor with God. And some good things that happen to you. He said, listen, he said this. And behold, thou shalt conceive, verse 31, in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Now, what I like about the angels telling us that what Jesus is going to be called, even if the human race don't call him, he's going to be great anyway. For those of you that don't like Jesus, 
He's going to be great anyway. Why? Because God said he's going to be great. So it doesn't matter how many human beings participate in this. Because God is saying this thing. And when God said, ain't nothing else can be said. Verse 32, he shall be called great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom, there shall be no end. Boy, I like forever and end. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now this is the angel talking to Mary, all right? Verse 36, And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now, Mary was not like Zechariah, okay? The, uh, Zacchaeus, in, in the book of um, um John's dead, okay? He, when the angel came to him, he didn't believe it. He said, how should I know this thing? And so the angel told him, wait a minute, I stand in the, in the, in the face of God. I stand in the presence of God. And that's why an angel, what he did, he couldn't talk until after John was born. But I want you to notice what Mary did. Mary said this in verse 38. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto, I accept it. Whatever you say, Lord. She didn't die. Whatever. It's good to say, know what to say when God visits you. It's good to know, have enough sense. And she, that's what she did. Yes, go ahead. Now go to the mic. And when, when you do that, it shows that you got faith. So now, God done told her through an angel what's going to happen to her about Jesus. So she said, I accept it. Whatever you say, Lord, I'm accepting. Go ahead. Apostle, is that the very minute that she, because she received that word, is is that the very minute she received the the seed, very the seed, moment the, seed the, the, the whole well when the Holy Spirit came upon yeah. her faith what her faith did her faith opened up for the Holy Spirit to work because she could have refused it she could have said no, I don't want this or she could have showed doubt she, no she did the very moment you walk in faith the moment you decide I'm going Walk in faith, or the moment you decide I'm going to walk out the word of God, you got help. The Holy Spirit show up. He start helping you. The power of God, the, the power of God is working inside of your heart, all right? So that's where we are. Any questions before we move on? So now, the announcement have taken place. Now she understands what's happening, all right? Okay, now, let's go back to Matthew chapter 1. Okay, everybody got it? Okay, we're going to go back to verse 18. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, okay, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with of the Holy Ghost. Now she's pregnant. All right, I want you to follow along. The angel came to her, told her what was going to happen, she accepted. Now she's pregnant. Now the next thing that happened is this. All right? The next thing, verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was mine to put her away. Now you understand now. Okay, she, okay, she's is married to Joseph. And she's pregnant. And she's pregnant before the marriage was consummated. Now, 
I want y'all to make sure y'all understand this. So now, but the thing about it, she told Joseph. She, she, told, she told, told him. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not, she didn't hide it from him, all right? But, you know, I want you to understand, wait a minute. Now, you're going to tell me that you're pregnant, but you haven't been dating another man. I want you to put yourself in this place. I don't think he ate for a while. You know, he had to, in, in, okay, he's Joseph human being, but he's a just man, and he's battling with this. You know, he's battling with what's taking place, all right? And that's what he's doing. It says, then Joseph was being a just man and not willing to make her a public example. How do you know he battled? Read verse 19. If you understand verse 19, he thinking about getting rid of her. I'm not going that direction. But he, he didn't want to make her a public spectator. He didn't want to ruin her life. He just wanted to dissolve it and move on. All right? Then it says, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thy son David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now, I want you to notice now what happened. Okay, Mary didn't have to keep explaining herself because now God is involved. But wait a minute. Mary was honest with it. She went and told him. She's not like women that get pregnant by other men and they don't tell their husband. She ain't like that. No, she, she, she was honest. And because of that, God moved in their lives. And he began to minister to Joseph, telling Joseph, wait a minute, what Mary told you was right. It was not, she, this child was not conceived by a man. All right? It says, he came to Joseph in a dream. Joseph, thy son David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from, his sin, from their sin. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. Then Joseph, being raised up from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had, had bidden him and took unto him his wife. Now, what he did was this. Back then, when it talks about in spouse, in spouse it means they used to sign a contract saying, you know, you're going to be my wife on such and such a date. So what happened was, before that date came, she came back and told him that she was pregnant. And so he had, to, he had to battle with that until the Lord came to him in a dream and ministered to him. So after the Lord ministered to him, then he went and, and, and uh, finished what he started. He took Mary for his wife, his wife, and knew not her till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. Okay, so now... What we got? We got, first of all, the angel went to who? And made the announcement what was going to happen. The second thing that took place was after Mary gladly accepted that, then Joseph had to be persuaded that this thing was of God and that what she told him was right. Because, you know, any other way wasn't going to work. That child, you can say whatever you want to say. I mean, uh, fixing favorite meals that, you know, you know, that, that, uh, <laughs> it was beyond that. I'm telling you, it was beyond, yeah, hey, you know, <laughs> that, that ain't going to help, you know. Go oh, out and fix your favorite cake. That ain't going to, no, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> Can you imagine? Say, what? <laughs> Man, uh, they ain't going to help. But anyway, the Lord dealt with that thing, and he dealt, and, and because of that, Joseph actually believed what, was going, what, what uh, Mary said. All right, any questions? 
Now we're going step by step what's happened so you can understand. Now, Joseph realized that his wife is carrying a special seed. All right? Any questions? All right. Now, let's go back to Luke. Again, well, let's see right here. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 2. Let's see in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter, let's go to Luke chapter 2. Everybody got it? Let's see here. Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2. Let's see here. <clears throat> now, okay. Now, they were not in Bethlehem. So now what God got to do, before she deliver, God got to get them to Bethlehem. All right? That's what God got to do. So in Luke chapter 2, this is what happened. Beginning in verse 1, it says this. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made by Serenus, the governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from where? Out of the city of Nazareth. Into who? Where? Unto the city of David, which is called, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Now I want you to see the plan of God. God, see, you know, there are places, if God going to do something for you, and it's going to be in a certain place, God going to allow something to happen to get you in that place. He going to allow something to take place to get you in that. So now God is working his plan. He's work. How can you? How can you fight against somebody that works his own plan? I don't like what you said, but what can you do to stop it? <laughs> it don't make sense, do it? So now God is actually working the plan out. So now He calls Caesar to declare a worldwide tax. You going to pay taxes? Isn't there something? To get them from Nazareth of Galilee to Bethlehem of Judea. Now, that, that, now that's awesome. That's awesome. It's, let's read this again. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, Judah, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped in him in bandages, swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. Now, look at what God did. Because, see, I, I see another pro prophesied that a child was going to be born in Bethlehem. That's what, and God had a way of getting them from one place to his place. From their place is, that people got, you'll be surprised when you're in the will of God, he'll be guiding your life, you don't even know it. You wonder what is going on. And the devil be trying to stop you, but you know what? God just take you right on the way you want to. Whatever God going to do with you, if you give him permission, it's going to be done. It's just going to be done, all right? They, Mary had a baby with no man. It wasn't no test tube baby. All right? Jesus. Lord Jesus. I've never heard of that before or since. Have you? So whatever God does if you with your life, if you give him permission... The Lord, he's going to get this done. So now he's wrapped in swaddling clothes. He's there now. Jesus is born. Now, after Jesus was born, the next thing that took place was this. All right? Same book. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in their fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. 
And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger at night. Now how in the world could he have been born in the cold season of the year and he outside in a stall at night, wrapped up in bandages? How in the world? No. Then it says this. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass, as the angels were going away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem. They were about five miles away to see this thing which has come to pass which the Lord have made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now I want you to understand this. They were so overjoyed because the Lord made known to them what was taking place. In other words, the Lord made known to them the truth. Just like he's making known to you all tonight the truth. What happened? Now, the shepherds, they hadn't got there yet, but they're getting ready to go there, all right, to where Jesus was. It says in verse 17, and when they had seen it, they made known among the sayings which was told them concerning the child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Now, wait a minute here. Okay, the shepherds end up leaving their flock, going to Bethlehem, and they were not guided by a star. They was told where to go. Now that's what my Bible telling me. There was no twinkle, twinkle, little star. How far are you? I like to know where you are. <laughs> All right. The Bible's telling. This Bible's telling me the she, the the angels told him, and then you had a choir there of angels. Psalmists are angels. No missing, no, all harmonizing. All of them know the words to the song. All of them singing to the glory of God and his Christ. Every one of them, every one of them. There was not a one of them that you wanted to turn off or turn down. Every one of them. Uh, have, it was a choir, <laughs> a heavenly choir folk singing to the shepherd. The Lord did what he had to do to convince them. And they left. They didn't say I'm going in the morning. They left at night and got there at night and found Jesus as the angels had said, all right? Now, any questions? All of this, everybody following now. Everybody following. Okay, the announcement was made. Angels came to Mary, told Mary what was going to happen. Mary accepted that. And then God gave Joseph a dream so he can accept that. And now Jesus is born. But he wasn't born in Nazareth, his hometown. He was born in Bethlehem. Why? Because, see, God made sure that he was born in the right place. Now, Mary, they didn't, impl they didn't plan this. God is planning all this now. Why? Because she gave him authority to guide her life. Lord, use me. He said, okay, I'm going to take you where I want you to take you. All right? 
thing about any question before we move on. Okay, now, now, the same chapter, verse 21, Luke, and when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus. So after she had, eight days later, he was circumcised. So named the angel before he was conceived in the womb. All right? Now, verse 22, and when the days of their purification, according to the law of Moses, was accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now, I want you to go, I want you to go to the book of Leviticus, chapter 12. Leviticus, chapter 12. Verse 22 in Luke said of chapter 2 said it's talking about purification so he had to be circumcised then there had to be a purification before he go to Jerusalem now let's read what the purification was Leviticus chapter 12 verse 1 says and the Lord spake unto Moses saying speak unto the children of Israel saying if a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days. According to the days of the separation for her infirmity, shall she be unclean. And in the eighth day, the flesh of the foreskin shall be circumcised. That's what happened. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and how many? She, sh she shall touch no hollow thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the day of our purification. All right. Now, right here now is talk, the next verse talking about if a daughter is born. But we're going to stay with the men. Now, I want you to listen to this now. Okay. After Jesus was born, they did not go to Jerusalem until 41 days later. Now, the shepherd's gone. The shepherds are gone, all right? I want you to understand this. Don't be ignorant like these other folks are. Now, I'm going to read this. Stay where you're at. I'm going to read this verse in Luke 2, 22. And when the days of our purification, according to the law of Moses, was, uh, was finished, accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem. So now we know here in Luke chapter 12, I mean in Leviticus 12, that she had to go through a purification period after he was circumcised he was circumcised on the eighth day then 33 days later she she could not go to a temple she could not go to Jerusalem all right so now now we got about 41 days all right now any question okay now go to Matthew chapter 2 Matthew chapter 2. Everybody got it? <clears throat> Matthew chapter 2. In the book of Matthew chapter 2 verse 1 it says, now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the... Now, now it's talking, Matthew is talking about wise men, and I didn't see no three listed that came from the east. All right, now let's read on now. Now the wise men saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star 
in the east, and I come to worship him. Now, the wise men came from the east. Now, the wise men were men that was dealing with astrology, watched the stars and all this, came from another country. And the star directed them to a certain place. It says, verse 2, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Now Herod them found out because these men that showed up. And it wasn't no three, it was a multitude. It was such a large group that it got the town's attention. And it got back to the king. You know, that you got a whole bunch of people, men here coming here looking for a king. And it's not you. So now Herod is stirred up. Herod says, okay, verse 3, when Herod the king had heard these things, he was now, why do you think he was troubled? Because his name wasn't mentioned. All right? He says, and all Jerusalem with them. And when he had gathered all the chief priests, the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, in Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it is written by the prophet, and thy Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. And what this scripture is saying, the prophet had prophesied and was telling Bethlehem, you know what? Because you small, you not left out. Because you might be New Ellington, you ain't left out. You, you might be the smallest town in town in, in, the, in Judah, but you're going to be lifted up. Now listen, okay. Lord, this is just good. This, this is just good. All right, let's finish this. It says, Then Herod, verse 7, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligent what time the st- They have not seen Jesus yet, all right? Okay, now, verse 7 again. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligent what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when he, when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Now, y'all know good well. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, another king. Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay, verse 9. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before. Okay, they still being guided by the star, okay, to, to the east. Till it came and stood over where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And they, when they will come into the, and when they will come into the, and when they will come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod. They departed into their own country another way. Wow. Wow. Lord Jesus. Lord. Now, what we just what we just found out, we found out that number one, that God came to Mary through Gable and let him know, let her know that she was gonna have a child. And she accepted it. The next thing happened was God dealt with Joseph and told Joseph in a dream that that child was impregnated by the Holy Ghost, not by a man. That's the next thing. 
And then after Joseph accepted him and took her as his wife, then what happened next? Go get a mic. Go to the mic. There's a mic. Whoever first to the mic, if you know. Then a, a child was born. Okay, a child was born. But what? Okay, after. No, that wasn't next. That was not next. The Lord had to get them to Bethlehem. The Lord had to get them to Bethlehem. So what he did, he called Caesar, who was an ungodly king, to declare a tax. Now, I don't care what the devil do. When the Lord get ready to do something, he don't ask the devil. He don't ask the devil at all. He called Caesar to declare a season of tax for everybody. So now they got to leave Nazareth of Galilee and they got to come to Judah, Bethlehem in Judah. Why? Because that's where you're going to be born at. Now you, can, now you can follow the devil if you want to. But now the whole time, you think the devil wanted to get in the picture? You think he didn't try? But for some reason, he was kept out. For some reason, he was kept out of the picture. All right? Now, what happened next? Anybody? Nobody? Okay. Well, after they went to be taxed and Jesus was born. That's it. Because it seems like y'all can't remember nothing. Then Jesus was born. That's it. Ain't got nothing to do with Santa Claus. Ain't got nothing to do with reindeer. Ain't got nothing to do with nothing the world is declaring. All this stuff you see ain't got nothing to do with it. Then Jesus was born. And then after Jesus was born, then what happened next? The shepherds came by the... No. He made known to the shepherds. The he made, he sent an angel to the shepherds. They was out there minding their own business out on the countryside at night. Not in the daytime, but at night. Minding the sheep. And the angels came and made an announcement to the shepherds that a Savior had been born. And then they told the shepherds exactly where to go. No star, where'd they go? All right, now what happened next? Anybody? Go ahead. Purification. All right, after Jesus was born, then a purification took place. All right? The purification lasts how long? Anybody? 41 days. 41 days. 41 days. Now, who haven't showed up yet? The wise men hadn't showed up. So what the wise men got to do with being in the picture with the shepherd? When you see those little, what they call nativity scenes, everybody standing around there, that little shed wasn't big enough <laughs> to hold all the wise men. So now, 41 days later, the wise men show up. And he's not at a stable. Well, they are in a house. It was too cold to stay out there for 41 days. Now, where all this other stuff come from? Do you think the Holy Spirit is giving people this? Do you think they receive through revelation? God ain't got nothing to do with this at all, at all. But we're going to show you 
where this stuff come from, and why is heading in the direction it's heading in. And these preachers and these churches, so-called church, that put these signs up saying, include God in there, you can't put God in nothing he don't want to be in. You ain't putting Jesus in nothing he, was, he don't want to be in. If he never was a part of it, he don't want to be a part of it, your action, me and your actions are not going to do it. All of that stuff is of the devil. And what you're going to see is this. It's going to become more wicked or more worldly and more worldly than ever. Look around. That's why you don't see Jesus on them signs. That's why you don't see Jesus in those commercials. All you see is what the devil wants you to see. Why? Because the Lord ain't had nothing to do with it. Not at all. Now, that's the birth of Jesus. From beginning to end. That's the birth, of, and now he's here. And then the shepherds show up. And then the wise men show up. Now, it says this in verse 10, Matthew 2. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasure, they proceeded, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Now, if you notice, God told them to don't go back to Herod. Because he knew what Herod would have did. Herod would have killed. Killed every one of them. Just like he had these boy babies killed if you read on. Now here's the question tonight. Any, do you see any resemblance to what these folk doing now? Do you see, in, in the, according to the word, anything? Any, anything? How many of you understand? Okay, now we're going to watch this video. So we've got to leave our friends on Facebook and let you see exactly where this mess came from and why the Lord ain't got nothing to do with it, never have, and hope it'll make some sense to you if you allow it, all right? Y'all ready? 